masterclasses in new consciousness, new ways of thinking, being and doing for the new you. Pioneering thinkers from countries right around the world. Hello, Om Shanti and a very warm welcome to today's masterclass, one of 21 masterclasses in new consciousness, new ways of thinking, being and doing in today's rapidly changing world. Well, of course, all of us are getting used to the physical rules and regulations that are there to keep us safe and protected physically. But are we equally paying attention to the spiritual laws that are there to keep us safe and protected from within? My name is Philippa and I'll be with you throughout this series as together we listen to speakers who are yogis, they're meditators from countries right around the world, from all backgrounds and from all walks of life, as they share with us their tools, their navigational tools and techniques for really mastering and finding a way through these challenging times. Well, for those of us who have as yet been personally untouched by the coronavirus, either by being ill ourselves or supporting loved ones through the process of being ill, the instruction to stay at home in lockdown has for many people had a silver lining, which has been that we've had more time to spend with ourselves. Somehow our life before lockdown meant that we never really got round to certain jobs. There was a level of being with ourselves that somehow we just never managed to find time to do. And I don't know about you, but I've done all sorts of things that I just know I would have never done otherwise. I'll give you a few examples. I've been through my drawer with all my spices. I've gone through them, thrown out all the ones that are out of date. They're now all looking all lined up with labels and looking beautiful and all in date. I've, what else have I done? I've, I've made soup from nettles that I've gathered from the hedgerow. I've um, planted vegetable seeds and watered them and delighted in watching them as they put their heads up above the earth and begin to grow. All sorts of things that have really helped me connect with myself, helped me slow down and, and really find a point of stillness within. And I know so many other people have done all sorts of other things that have given them that same experience of slowing down, of touching in with themselves. And this is our theme for today. It's finding the opportunity to really spend quality me time. Now, all of our speakers in this series are students and teachers of the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University. And as the name suggests, it's a place to really understand the self, to go deeply into the questions of, of who am I? The organisation teaches Raj Yoga Meditation, which is the yoga of the mind. And it has teaching and meditation centres in over 110 countries right around the world and an active presence in even more countries than that. It was founded in India back in 1936 through a series of visions and teachings that came through the original founder, Brahma Baba, teachings which were very much geared specifically to this period of time that we're going through right now, what some might call a transitional phase from one way of being to another. Now the founder decided quite early on that he would put women in front, uh, making the Brahma Kumaris the largest organisation in the world, spiritual organisation, to be led by women. And its range of activities is vast, from having a permanent office at the United Nations in New York, right through to working with the poorest tribal communities in the desert plains of Rajasthan in India, and pretty much everything in between. Well, let me introduce you to the guide for helping us find a slower pace of life. And it's someone who's really managed to achieve great things out there in the world, whilst always making her inner life her priority. And for her, this has always included waking up very early in the morning for uninterrupted quality me time, which is possibly the secret of her success. Moira Lowe is from Latin America and having established her career as a surgical nurse in Argentina, Moira came across the Brahma Kumaris 34 years ago in her early 20s and immediately recognised something that she wanted to devote her life to. She lived at and ran meditation centres in Chile 
where she was based for seven years, in Uruguay and Paraguay, where she lived for 15 years, and she's now settled in Buenos Aires in Argentina. And it's from there that Moira joins us today. Moira, it's so great and lovely to have you on Masterclasses. Welcome. Thank you, Philippa. It's my pleasure to join this amazing, wonderful initiative. Thank you. Now, it, it must sometimes be hard to organise your life to do it, um, but you do have this practice of early morning meditation. Would you agree that that is one of your secret weapons? And, and if so, what do you feel this time that you carve out for yourself at the beginning of every day? What do you feel that gives you? Well, throughout time, I have felt that starting the day with giving some time to myself and spending time in silence, in silent meditation, in a deep conversation with myself, but also a conversation with the divine has provided such a such an amazing way of starting my day. And it has centered me. And especially now in this time of, of coronavirus in which we have to stay at home, I have made this my top priority to be, I, I'll tell you, I'm getting up very, very early, even earlier than normally. Normally I get up at four, but now I'm, I'm getting up at two. So between two and seven, I find is, I don't expect people to do this at all, but I find that this is like a, such a gift because I, I, I'm very quiet, I'm very open, I'm totally receptive, I'm, I'm very um, observant of my inner world and especially very, very open to receiving from because early morning meditation is really a time not for too much thinking i will study later but at that time it's more to receive and perceive the energy of the divine so for me early morning time is a time for connecting it's a time for being embraced by divine love so it's uh, I, I don't know what I what my day would look like if I if I didn't do this. So it is very much a foundation of my spiritual journey, and then it is followed by uh, by study and then a very busy routine normally, but now very quiet. So I find that this this time is such an amazing gift for us all, at uh, whatever time you you decide to to get up, because it's. It's some, I don't know, I don't think we could have imagined that the world could come to a pause and that it could come to a, you know, stop and, and say, you know, here it is. This is the time you have dreamt of. You, you know, I think at the back of the mind of all of us, there is this promise that we will have a time to do that fine, deep homework within that we don't normally assign any time to in a normal routine and you know for some people it might be to read the book they haven't read or to have a conversations they'd like to have but this is such a gift such a time that we can create a, a routine that will give enough time to spend in silence enough time to explore enough time to practice whatever I need to develop within so I, I find that the, the, the challenge here is like, you know, if it's, it's easy to stop um, coming and going. I mean, it might have taken some adjustment at the beginning. We've been here for a month and a half now. We have, I think we have like for another long month. So it, it took like a little time, uh, well, quite a while to wind down internally because we can stop coming and going but it's not so easy to stop you know coming and going with my mind so i have found the early morning time something that grounded me deeply with with myself and i can hear the you know my inner voice telling me what is it that i deeply need now 
And I find I can that imagine this- some people listening to this and being quite surprised in a way that you have all these years of experience of living in a meditation center, leading quite a, a yogi life, very simple, plenty of time to really be with yourself. That even someone like you has found this period of being forced to stay at home in lockdown, that even you have been able to go deeper into the experience of being still and being slow. Has that been a surprise to you that there was still further that you could go yourself? Well, yes and no, because um, to an extent, because I have always been very active um, and I knew that I had to kind of wind down. So it hasn't been a surprise that it was a bit hard at the beginning, But, but yes, on the other hand, uh, just observing these two different levels, the doing and the coming and going, and the flow of that. And and although we stop that, the, the mind continues to plan. And and now there's not, there's no excuse, nothing else that I, that I need to do other than listen to myself, look at myself. And I'm now fully with it. I'm, I, I'm so happy to embrace this. And Although at some, you know, there are moments in which I could be quietly reading or contemplating and I find myself another little thing to do. And as you were saying, you've already done all the cleaning, you've already sorted out. You, <laughs> I think everybody must have done that. But now is time for cleansing, time for healing. At least this is what I feel, doing the homework that has not yet been done. And I'm so appreciative of this time. So it takes me very, very deep into myself to see what is it that I want? Because in, in letting go, and I think that also this, this time uh, at home faces us with relationships. It faces us with how we impact people's lives and how we would want things to be and then observing how they, how they are. And I think it brings us back home to observe what is happening in my mind, what are the quality of my thoughts, and and how the thoughts are such a power that create an energy field all around me. And whatever I am going through in my mind is touching people's lives and impacting the relationships that I hold. So I, this is a very precious time to see what what cleansing needs to happen and what healing needs to happen within myself and also with others. So I find this um, uh, a very, very um, crucial moment in my life in which I can really let go of past things that I have um, kind of put under the carpet or left for a better time. And it needs my full attention and and when I say this, it doesn't mean that I need to focus on something that is painful to feel further pain, to know that pain is painful. <laughs> but I need to, letting go is an aspect of creation itself. I can only let go of what is holding me back or still disturbing my mind if I can think of what it is that I want, what it is that I need. So the mind will only let go if it has something that is really nourishing and, and fulfilling the, the real need. So I find that this, yeah. There, there is a letting go, and, and I think it would be interesting to explore this. But I'm also curious to really try and understand why we have this resistance to 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 slowing down and stopping and I, I'm wondering whether as women we are programmed to take care of other people to put other people's needs ahead of our own and that perhaps we feel guilty about concentrating on ourselves and I don't know in Argentina but you know in many industrialized western countries we have this strong work ethic uh, we call it the Protestant work, work ethic. I don't know if the Catholics also have the same work ethic, but it's, it's about, you know, to, to justify yourself and your time, you need to be doing things, you need to be producing results. And there's something about not doing and simply being that inside of ourselves we struggle with and we put up barriers to it and we will find other things to do before we do this work. 
And, and I just wonder what you feel those blockages and resistances are really about. What is going on when, when we resist? Well, I think that this aspect of um, giving time to myself, at least amongst the Catholics, I think it brings a, a big element of guilt. It's like selfish. You know, if you give time to yourself, it's a bit selfish. And then also this proving yourself and feeling useful by being needed and serving. But I think we have also fed on that. We have created an identity that has been built around the doing. So I, you know, if I want to feel, if, if I feel I'm identified with what I do and I want to feel better, then I should be doing more. And so this aspect of quantity is, has also been feeding a self of fulfillment, which slips, slips through our hands because it, ultimately we just feel empty. We, we, we feel drained out. We feel very frustrated when we can't stop. So I think this is, um, the call of the time now is to go at a, to think of ourselves at a different level because having identified with professional doing, with a fa family care and busy, busy life has created a, an identity, something that made me feel safe or feel accepted. Uh, but completely it has, it has made me feel empty as well. And this was the very reason why I left when I was 24 on this long journey searching for the meaning of life. I think that this busy, hectic life that we were living um, made, brings us now to a place where we say, you know, what is the, what, what's the purpose of all this? So I think that it's a, it's a call to awaken to a higher level of ourselves, to bring our attention to understanding that we are spiritual beings and that we are this living energy that is giving life to this body that is that is that is creating my reality with every thought i think with every feeling that i create so it puts me at the center of my creation and 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 i take responsibility for how i feel so i not only don't feel guilty because it takes all my attention to focus to wind down to to observe to understand who then am I really? And to perceive that I am this living, this light, this spiritual light that shines through everything I create. And so it's, it's a wonder to discover that we are, we are complete and we are living as an empty battery that has been worn out, out of continuous expression. We have been drained of our energy and then we become identified with that emptiness. So we, we easily identify with weaknesses. We identify with failure. And, and also, when we create positive things in that awareness, they, it, becomes, it slips away. It's just a temporary thing. But when we look at ourselves deeply, and then we can perceive that this spiritual energy is, is a constant thing. That's what I am. That's what I have always been and what I will be forever. So, and I can connect to, to a level of energy that is, that is so powerful. The more we, we observe ourselves and tap into our, the core of our being, then we, we realize that we are peace itself. And we have been looking for peace in everything we do. We have been doing things to feel safe. We have been doing things to feel um, secure or um, to be loved. And so the more we become the observer of who I am, and these are the powerful experiences we have early in the morning, that we really feel I am the energy of love. So, and we... Imagine the amount of things we've been doing to be loved and to be looked at and to be accepted or appreciated at work, at home, in friendship. You know? And, and it's made, it, it made us a beggar of love. And we, the, the need of experiencing love is so legitimate in the soul, in the being that we are. So when we, when we realize who we are, then 
a whole new a whole new possibility starts. Then I become free. I regain that freedom that I had lost. It is a paradox in a way, isn't it? If you think of how we're on a treadmill, on a hamster wheel in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I recognise in myself that there have been times when being busy has has become a cycle of addiction. Yeah. And it's almost yeah. it's almost easier to keep being busy than it is to stop. And yet, bizarrely, the thing that we're really looking for and striving for and hoping to achieve through all our busyness, which is a feeling of fulfilment, a feeling of being connected, a feeling of being loved that those are things that we find when actually we do the opposite of being busy, when we actually stop and spend time with ourselves. It, it's, a, it's a bizarre thing. And, yeah. yet, and yet here we are now with the whole world yeah. in this enforced stopping. And I know that at the Brahma Kumaris, you're very um, keen on promoting the idea of going on a retreat. Yeah. And you have retreat centres that give you a chance to step aside from your life and experience who you are without your normal distractions. I wonder what you feel the the result, the consequence of this this global retreat, this global pausing. What what is that going to be? How's that going to affect us? Do you think? Well, I think nothing will be the same. Nothing in every sense. I think that people are completely open and receptive. To, to thinking about their life and themselves in a completely different way. I, I can, I'm, I'm sensing this and the way, the connectivity that it has created, uh, not only with myself, but also amongst us as, as, as a human family, is just amazing. It's just amazing. I, and I also see in the social media, people are offering the best they have. The good thoughts, good feelings. So I think we're learning together what happens when we all choose to be happy, when we choose to be positive, when we choose to offer help to each other. It creates such a different uh, feeling of why we are together in first place. Well, I imagine, I imagine a very um, amazing time to come. On one hand, we have a global recession. We have um, this pandemia is is charging a very high price in human lives and a lot of sorrow. But on the other hand, people are now together. People are within their families, and I think you know the fact that families have their children doing their school at home. And they have to help each other. They have to share internet. They work together. It's bringing a whole different dimension of why we were why we're a family in first place. So it's it's bringing it's making alive a new possibility. So I find that, and not only um, within a family, but also uh, globally, we are so connected. So a bigger a bigger feeling of a family, and I think that. Uh, we are realizing that the type of change that we that needs to happen within needs more silence. We need to uh, listen to each other a lot more, understand each other, accept each other. So I think that um, in order to to do that, um, we also need divine help. Because it's not enough just to read a good book and to, you know, reorganize my home and my routine. It's a, it's a big jump that we are, we are, we're going to give right now of consciousness. So we need to become clean and whole again. So I need to deal with things that, um, you know, like I find that um, sorting out our relationships right now is very, very important. And I think that, you know, if you think of families that are, I'm in a retreat place right now. I, I'm in a, in a place that couldn't be better for, a, for this global retreat and the retreat within that retreat. But some families are living together in a small place with their children. They are together spending time which normally they wouldn't because they would all be doing their own thing in their different places. So this requires a lot of power, a lot of tolerance, a lot of adapting, a lot of discernment. So in order to increase our power, we need to spend time with ourselves and we need to 
we need to think deeply how we have that strength, but we need to observe that. And I find that meditation is is such a powerful tool to to allow us to reconnect to the source of power, because on one hand, if we become if, if we become if we, give t- if we give time to ourselves to look within, we will see two things. We will see that there's a, there's a beautiful me that is shining and is, is very, it's very beautiful, but there's another side of me that is dark, and, and they're my habits, my weaknesses, that I have identified for too long. And so how do I, how do I stay on this side, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the beautiful side? when the influence of my negative habits is so strong and it puts me on automatic pilot of thought patterns that I can't handle. So I end up reacting to little, little things and I imagine how sensitive we become now when we have all the family at home and a lot of pressure and a lot of uncertainty ahead. So I think that um, Meditation, even with a family, would be very, very useful because it will help us to reconnect with the source of power that can empower the soul. And if we see the soul right now as a battery that has been worn out because we have been expressing continuously without recharging, then I need, I need more power. So when we sit in meditation, we don't only think of myself as a soul, as a being of light, as an energy, but I can reconnect with the source of energy that when, when it's like connecting two cables and one has the current and the other one is deprived of that. So if we if we unwrap the cable itself, then the, the energy will come from one to the other. And this is like how we can feel more peaceful when we reconnect to God's peace. And the supreme being, the source of power, is also energy, is also a, a being of light, and not present everywhere, and definitely not within me, because if, at least in this part of the world, people think that God is within me or I'm part of him. But if, if that was the case, then why would I be empty? Because if he is the, the unlimited source of power, then I would have that quality. So I am a, I'm a receiver of his energy and I need to reflect that energy, but I'm not the generator of that. So this is, this is the connection that we need to do. And I think that the, when, we, when you think what is, what's next in the world, it's connecting, connecting to everything and everybody and con- reconnecting to the source. And sometimes people are asking me, you know, with different media interviews now, what can we have hope in? And we can, we can have hope in ourselves because the being of light that we are is forever. Things have changed. Many things around us will change. But I will always be me. And I can also have hope in my source. And as much as the sun is the source for plants, and the sun helps, shines enough light and heat to awaken what is in a seed, to allow it to grow and blossom and, and flourish, that happens with us when we reconnect to divine energy that awakens in me that which is in him, which is also my essence. We are peaceful. We are love, loving. We are true beings. And when that, that unlimited, unconditional love touches my heart, it awakens that and allows it to be expressed without fear. So I feel it sounds so beautiful. It sounds so beautiful the way you describe it. Um, it's almost like a, a healing. It, it feels a bit like offering yourself 
to surrender to some process, um, you know, a bit like an energy upgrade that, that I can feel the energy that's coming from you as you're speaking. And I know that you used to work as um, a, a surgical nurse, preparing people for operations and uh, preparing to meet the surgeon. Do you see any parallels there between the work that you did and, and in a way this spiritual work that you're doing now? Well, I think that one of the one of the beautiful roles that God plays within our the way He intervenes in our life is that He can be a spiritual surgeon. And when we when I used to work in hospital, we had you know there were three conditions that uh, we needed from the patient. First of all, patients had to come into the operating theater alone which means all friends and relatives had to stay out. So for in, in spiritual surgery, then that would be, I can only be alone in the sanctuary of my mind, just me. And that will allow the, the surgeon to take care of me. And we also needed patients to come naked. So although we covered them with a, with a sheet, but they had to come to us naked. So that also requires me, if I want to go through spiritual surgery uh, to heal, then I also need to let go of roles and responsibilities and relationships and all this identity that I have been holding on and come as the naked being of light, that, that just spiritual energy. And the third thing we needed from patients was that we needed patients to be still. Unless the patient was still, how could the surgeon do anything on his body? So what, what does that mean to us is that we need silence. We need to become introverted. Introversion is like the gateway into my inner world. And I need to be quiet and cool and just... Just stay there. I'm not going to do anything because when you go to a surgeon, he does everything. I just need to be there. But in order to go, a patient would have to tell the surgeon what it is that is happening with, with total honesty, with complete trust. And you patients just put their, their body in the hands of a surgeon. So this is us being completely open about what is it that I need to transform? What has been holding me back? What, have I, what burden have I carried? Or what wounds are open from the past? And I need, so this is when meditation becomes this very sweet relationship of trust in which I am able to open my heart completely to, to the divine and allow him to do his laser beam surgery of love. And if we went through physical surgery, we would have to go through a little bit of pain, maybe afterwards. But spiritual surgery would make me free, would make me feel light, would make me feel one again. And my broken heart will become one. Taking this analogy just one step further, in order for the patient to be in a position where they're needing surgery, there's got to have been uh, some discomfort, some illness, some problem, some kind of um, hiccup in their life that has, that has led them to need this help. And I wonder if you see that as being a parallel in the spiritual journey as well, that we sometimes do need a little moment of discomfort or pain yes, or, yeah. or not quite feeling that things are right for us. Because when we're happy and things are right, we skip along and, and we tend to just keep going with what is. But when something comes to interrupt that flow and we feel the discomfort and the pain, and that's in a way what is happening now with this whole pandemic is that we're feeling the, the pain of, of that, that that can be a trigger that makes you think, actually, perhaps I do need surgery, the, the spiritual surgery that you're talking about. So turning this time of sorrow, of challenge, and seeing that maybe that's playing a vital role in yeah. helping me find that depth within myself that I might not otherwise have looked for. Would you agree yeah. with that? Totally, totally. Because, I mean, we, we can be so um, pleased with just our superficial ego 
<laughs> and little attainments, but our heart is craving for something real, for, for true love, for deep peace, and for deep understanding of, you know, what am I here for? So when things, and, and I can see like right now, the conversations that we're holding with friends and people that we are connecting with, it's like, when you look back, you know, you, you think, how could we do this to ourselves? <laughs> or, or how much more of that do we want? So complete transformation um, will take place. Of course, according to each one's realization and aims as well. No? But I think that once, uh, that that's how I also, um, when, I, when I went on that long journey, it was when nothing worked for me anymore, I felt that I, there was nothing else that I wanted from anyone or anywhere. And I was backpacking the world and I was not really aiming to go anywhere in particular. And I didn't, I was not looking for anyone. I just wanted to understand what is it that I'm here for? What am I meant for? And I think this makes us hit rock bottom. And when nothing worked for me, also because my mind was so loud, so, so loud, I had so many questions. So I thought, I need to stop. That was when I, um, funnily enough, you know, I was in India and, and I, I was, uh, I realized that traveling didn't make it for me anymore. And so I thought, then what's next? I, I felt that I was losing my time. As You know, I felt life is precious, but I'm not doing anything with it. You know, and this is when I, I thought I have to stop. And I, I saw someone in the street in India out of a hotel window. And I, I, I was so uh, bombarded with too many thoughts. And I thought, I'm going to ask this man where, where, I can, where I can stop my mind, where I can rest my mind. This is what I asked him. And he said, oh, rest your mind. And I told myself, whatever this guy tells me, I will do. And I went down and I asked him, and he said, rest your mind. And he said, in Mount Abu. And so I took a train and I went to Mount Abu. And I said, whereabouts? He said, north, south, whereabouts in India? And he said, it's south. I was heading to, to Kathmandu for a trek. And he said, it's south. So I, I took a train and I went there. And, and there's where I, I spent about a week there. I, I had no idea of the Brahma Kumaris at all. I just followed the intuition of whatever this guy told me and I went and this is when I feel that at those moments when you feel you're lost it's as if God gives you a big hand because how could this man send me to a place where I would learn about myself and I spent about a week there before I, I came across a group of students of the Brahma Kumaris in a beautiful temple called the Dilwara temple and one of the things I was asking myself is, what does happiness mean? And I, I saw people around the world. I said, people are entertained, but not really happy. And I thought, when I saw them, I thought, well, these people look very happy. So I, I, I told them, what is it you do? And they said, well, we, pra we are young people and we practice meditation. And I thought, well, that sounds cool. So this is where I started my first steps. But I remember the time in which I was desperate. I felt alone in the world, I felt I had nobody, um, I had nobody to talk to about the things that were happening in my heart and that I really wanted to know about. So for, for me, that was like, a, like a, a new beginning. So I would not be afraid of dark moments that seem to be, you know, like, what's going to happen? I feel that... Um, at that time, I used to tell, I told myself, uh, if I'm falling, reaching the bottom is much safer than to keep falling. So when you feel that your crisis has become extreme, you can expect for something great to happen. Great to happen, because you've had the courage to go that far. And at least if you have hit the bottom, the only place you can go from there is up. So, exactly. so that's a positive. Exactly. So for someone, for someone who's listening to this very inspiring story that you're sharing with us, um, and they feel that they are at that place of hitting rock bottom, 
talk us through some practical things that any of us can do whilst we're at home if we want to really connect in the way that you're talking about. Do we need to create a special place in our home where we maybe, you know, light a candle, have a special book of inspirations? How do we begin to really carve out some time for myself when it's not something I've been used to doing? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you can set some sp space for you, it, it may not be possible if you're living with a family who you're sharing maybe even a small place. But s sometimes to find a, a space for yourself is about the time that you do it as well. So I would suggest to start um, earlier in the morning because sometimes you know, you when you wake up, you already need to take care of the family or start doing things or even your work at home or the children. But if you start a little bit earlier, create time for the self. So in order to spend 15 minutes, half an hour, however much you would like to spend with yourself and sit quietly. And time, if you have something positive that you can read that will feed your mind, positive thoughts, that is great. Otherwise, you can also, you can play very soft music and create a little, a little environment for yourself to sit and look inward. So that time would be time to talk to yourself, to know yourself, to, to become aware of who you are and your, your real power within. And you can start with simple thoughts like, you know, I am a peaceful being. And you may not believe that because you may have been angry yesterday or you may, you may not be at peace normally, but we start using our creative energy and the power of creation, which is thought power. So let me create thoughts that will take me back home to reconnect with that very powerful, cool, quiet energy of peace that I am. And if and I observe that. So maybe other thoughts come. And maybe I can say, okay, I'll think about that later. But let me come back to this thought. And let me every day practice, practice going back to this sanctuary of my mind and observing, observing this energy. And then also I can become an observer of my mind. What kind of thoughts am I creating? So then I can ask myself, you know, what is it that I want? And I will slowly, slowly discover that what happens in my mind is really up to me. So what beautiful gift of the spiritual practice is that we realize we have the power to choose. So if I'm having negative thoughts about someone or something, then I can ask myself, what is it that I want? And can I create thoughts that will bring me closer or will help me to find a solution? Even if things are all adverse, we can still have a positive vision of whatever we need to get done or whatever, even what, what is happening. So I think that just starting every day, giving your time to yourself, and then during the day, if you can, uh, every now and then make a little pause and reconnect, reconnect with the self. We have in Brahma Kumaris a little practice called traffic control. And this is the traffic of our thinking. So there are applications that you can use called traffic control. And that is, it will sound some music every hour, every two hours, for just a couple of minutes, that you can stop. Whatever you're doing, you can stop and just bring yourself back home, back to that, to that inner sanctuary where you can reconnect with your original energy, your pure energy, your light. And then we continue to do what we have to do because there's, there's, there's a myth thinking that meditation is about being still all day and fixing your, your eyes on something. And meditation is really about being awake. It's about being connected. 
connected to meaning, connected to the self, connected to God, connected to others in a beautiful way, a, po a positive way. So when we think of meditation as being connected, then it's something we want to do all day. But if it, we think of it as something we have to stop and leave you know, everything aside, then we think, not possible, I've got too many other things to do. So, I, and also, we can also think about it as relationship, because it's the relationship with myself, and it's also the relationship with the divine. And we are in relationship with everybody around, but we need to offer these relationships better energy. So every day I can think of maybe this relationship or that relationship, what kind of, what, what does it need to become everything it could be? So can I offer better thoughts? Can I, because whatever thoughts I create will create feelings. And when I think of someone, that thought, that energy, touches the other, and it creates an impact in, in the other one's life. So can I, can I practically bring this kind of thinking for myself, about myself, with myself, can I bring it also to my relationship with others? Can I see the good in others? Can I have good feelings, even if I don't see good things, because we may have a history of conflict or whatever, but can I offer good thoughts because that will change my energy field and then it will it will start creating an atmosphere at home and sometimes relationships may not change immediately but if i persist then i feel that my spiritual practice is very practical and it's creating my reality and so i and i discover that i i'm the one responsible to how i use my energy and then every day if we start with meditation and also finish the day with meditation and then in the evening we can we can like, like revise what what did i do with myself what happened today what you know what was the quality of my life and so but just one or two questions we it's like we don't need to be very existential about it it's just like how did i go how did it work for me so Maybe I had negative thoughts, and I just the fact that I'm observing it, but I'm not there to check what I lost or what I did wrong. I'm there to check what I did good, what I attained. Because when we, when we look at what we attain in our, on our spiritual journey, this is where our motivation grows. And we have a high aim, because to be happy is a big decision we have taken, or we have to take. And being peaceful and being loving are big, big aims. But step by step, we move forward. And so we can, it's like checking. Every day we can check. This is a very powerful tool. And we in the Brahma Kumaris have this little routine at night before we go to sleep. We give ourselves a little time. We sit in meditation and have a conversation with myself and also with God and make him part of my life share my heart with him. Maybe I didn't do well in several things. Okay, tomorrow it, it will be better, but I also need to prepare my mind to rest. Because if I go to sleep worried and, you know, heavy, then although I will sleep, I, not necessarily I will rest. So next day I will take on from those thoughts and that will determine my day. It's very interesting to observe that the last thoughts of one day will be the first day thoughts of the next day. So we can, and it's just games that we play inside because we are knowing, we are starting to discover what energy am I and how does this energy work? What powers are within me? And so this is a practice that, and also to feel, it, it's so important to, to have this conversation with God because he will help me, he will, he will give me the power that I need, but I need to create this relationship of total honesty. I don't need to prove him anything. He loves me anyway. So the, we, God never forgets his children. It's his children who forget the Father. So <laughs> this is really, I like the word we use in Brahma Kumaris, which is remembrance. Because meditation, coming from the Latin 
Medere, which means healing, is not the only thing we want to do in our life. We want to blossom, we want to be ourselves. And so when we remember, it's like remembering who I am and who I belong to. Because we are, we are facing a big challenge and we might be facing much bigger challenges. And we can only do our best and the, the most honest and significant, I would say effort, but I mean attention, attention on my aim. And, and I, will, I will do so much. But like little children, if they come back from school and they have to walk a few blocks back home, if they get tired, they just ask the parents to hold them. So they'll walk as much as they can, but then the father will, or mother will carry them the rest. And we as children of the Supreme have that right. And we don't need to do it all. He, this is why thinking of it as relationship is so beautiful because the father is the father and the child is the child. So a baby wouldn't need to make his own bottle. There's the mother to do that. But he legitimately claims the bottle. <laughs> so when we need something, we, we can openly, with, with a full right and the full dignity, share this, share our heart with him but he's, he's not only the father of the soul, he's the mother. And so he will listen to me. She will listen to me, will hold me, and will, will walk along with me. I find this, this the most beautiful aspect of my spiritual journey, is that I'm not alone. And that I'm a traveler, and I have always been a traveler. Now I, I dropped my backpack in India those days. But I'm a traveler, and and always going through different things. And a traveler is always uh, drawn by the newness of the present time, wherever we are. The past is always, is always uh, left behind, and we're always here in this present moment, but not alone. I, when I left Argentina so long ago, I left on my own. But, and this is why my, tri my trip was so challenging and but my spiritual journey, which is inward and upward, is not alone. And I feel that now, more than ever, we need to rely on our companion. He is our dear companion. And he is there, always available, and just waiting for us to remember him. So if we say, I have to I meditate on God. No, I just need to remember him. Children remember the father and so it makes it feel much more natural to use words like connecting or remembering because meditation sounds a bit like a discipline yeah. and we might put that off um, but it, we've got to a point where it would be lovely to experience for ourselves some of what you're talking about um, so if you could guide us in a little time of connecting a okay. little time of connecting with ourselves to to the energy that is there and of remembering who we are and of what we're here to do and just speak your thoughts for us um, whilst we have this time of connecting and then we can all share with you in that experience great okay so i'd like to invite you all to uh, sit comfortably and take a deep breath. Feel that your body is relaxing and that you're alert and very present. And let me take all my attention to a sacred space behind my eyes, to a place my inner world, where I can observe myself. I am present, I am with myself. And I become aware that I am the living energy in this physical body. I am life itself, a spiritual energy that is light, divine light. And as I look 
deeper into my self. I can feel the cool, quiet energy of peace. And I feel free from worries, free from any influence. I feel very light, completely free. I am peace. Peace is my power. And I will take my attention deep into silence. Into the feeling of total calm. And as I go deeper into silence, I will take my attention beyond beyond this body as if I could see it from above and I will go further from this place as if I could see from above I will go beyond the mundane and the temporary limited into a dimension of unlimited silence and I feel surrounded by peace. This is my home and I see myself as light. I am only light, like a small shining star, in the presence of supreme peace, the light of God, my father, my mother. And I feel his vibration of peace surrounds me, embraces me. And shines into every corner of my being. In your sweet, loving look your eyes. I feel your pure love, your total acceptance, your love is divine love, pure love. And in your eyes, I can feel sweet child I am always always here for you I know you forever I love you Forever. Be with me. Allow my love to heal the wounds of the past. 
I make you free. No need to worry, nothing to fear. Simply be with me. And I have a deep feeling of gratitude, of the dignity of belonging to the purest, loving, peaceful being, my father, my mother, my companion. And in the joy of being who I am, I will return with my mind, knowing that I can come home whenever I want. It is always only a thought away. And I bring myself back to the world of actions where I play my part with my human family. And I am aware that my vibrations of peace and love reach out to everyone around me. And I allow this energy to run through my body, giving back the life energy to create immunity, health, and I come back again. Om Shanti. Om means I am and Shanti means peace. Well, we have certainly arrived in a place of peace and a place of connection and definitely a place of relationship. So thank you Moira so much for for sharing from the depths of your being this experience, this journey that you've been on and have inspired us to really look deeply within and find that journey for ourselves. So thank you so much for being with us and joining us on Masterclasses. Thank you, Philippa. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. And thank you as well to you for, for being part of, of this, joining us from wherever you are. I hope you are feeling that peace and will carry that with you as you go forwards from this point. Uh, we look forward to joining together again on the next Masterclasses. Until then, take good care. Om Shanti and goodbye. Twenty-one masterclasses in new consciousness. New ways of thinking, being and doing for the new you. Pioneering thinkers from countries right around the world. 